Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we'll solve this. We'll cover almost all the concepts about particle chasing problems. Okay, so basically the problem is that we have four particles A, B, C, and D uh, who are chasing each other. And the velocities are in such a way that the velocity of A always points towards B, B towards C, and X, and C towards D, and D towards A. And it's always like that. So we have to find the time at which they meet, the area of the square, the angular velocity of the square, and the acceleration of the particle and the radius of curvature of the particle as a function of time. So let's discuss all these one by one. What's happening is let's, as now the velocity of A is towards the right, therefore the particle will displace towards the right, let's say. So this distance is going to be V dt. We are observing the displacement of the particles after a very short interval. Now as the velocities of the other particles are also same, even their displacements are going to be the same. Now if we join all the particles, as you can see this line connecting A and B rotated by an amount of let's say d theta. By symmetry you can see all these particular, all these individual angles also rotated by an amount of d theta, which means this structure connecting all the particles would still be a square. Now the velocities of the particle would again change. Okay, so now this is the new direction of the velocities. So A was uh, in the horizontal direction initially and now it's ro now it rotated by an amount of d theta. So let's say at any general time t, the distance between two adjacent particles is r. Now if you observe this line connecting A and B, the velocities are in this way. So as you can clearly see, the distance between A and B, let's call it r, is decreasing at a rate of v. And this is the thing that makes this problem uh, so symmetric. And this will be the same at any time. So even initially, as you can see, a's velocity was in the horizontal direction and b was in this direction. So you can see dr by dt is still minus v. So as this is a constant, we can carry out this integral. So at t equal to zero, the initial side length of the square was let's say a. At any general time t, let's call it. So from here, we'll get a as a function of time as a minus vt. The side length of the square decreases linearly with time. So now as we have the side length of the square, we can easily find the area of the square as a function of time. And we can also find the time of chasing from this particular equation as by symmetry, we can observe that all these particles will meet at the center of the square. We can say at the time of meeting, the side length of the square would be simply zero. And from here, we can get the answer for the first question as a divided by v. So these particles would meet each other after a time of a divided by v. Moving on to the next part, let's say the angle rotated by this line AB is theta. So we can find the omega of this line AB or d theta by dt as it is simply the v perpendicular divided by the distance between them. So it's going to be v divided by r. And r as we determined in the previous page, it was a minus vt. So from here, you can see uh, as r is decreasing with time, the omega with which these lines rotate increases. And one more important thing, let's say if this line rotated by an amount of d theta, then all of these lines would have rotated by the same amount d theta. So it's simply like rotating this square by d theta in the clockwise direction. So the angular velocity with which this line connecting AB rotates will be the same angular velocity with which the square rotates. So if the question was, what was the angular velocity with which the square is rotating, it would be this value. And if you substitute r here, you'll get the omega as a function of time. Okay, so now let's try to determine the acceleration of any one of the particle. So in this particular case, after, so let's just discuss it in this particular case. So after some time, what will happen is B will move in this direction because B's velocity is in, in this direction. A's velocity vector will now be in this direction. Okay, now this is the new position of B. A would have moved a little bit forward as well. So this would be the new po position of A, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that the velocity of A has rotated by an amount of d theta. So initially the velocity vector was something like this. And after dt time, it has rotated by an angle of d theta. So clearly there, there won't be any tangential acceleration for any of these particles because the magnitude of the velocity is remaining constant, right? So there is only normal acceleration in this case. A's velocity vector was initially in this direction. It rotated by an angle of d theta. So the dv vector would be in this direction, the change in velocity. And also this dv vector would be perpendicular to the initial v vector. And the reason for that is that there, there cannot be a component of dv in the tangential direction, otherwise the speed will change. So, so now this is the, the arc length. So we can say dv equals v times d theta. So now if I just divide it by dt on both sides, then this, then the normal acceleration, then the acceleration of the particle a comes out to be v times d theta by dt. And d theta by dt we determined over here and this would simply come out to be v square divided by r. So we can even find out the 
radius of curvature of the particle a at this instant and the radius of curvature of that particle would be simply v square divided by divided by the normal acceleration and this would be v square divided by the normal acceleration we determined as v square by r so the radius of curvature of the particle a is simply r so that was it for this video guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below and thanks for watching